Hello and welcome to the screencast where we're going to work a particular optimization problem. So Bob is hiking from a trailhead to a campsite. <clears throat> the campsite is 20 miles east and 5 miles north of the trailhead as you see here in the diagram. And whichever way Bob goes he has to cut through a dense forest to get there. And he can travel fairly fast on the edge of the forest where it's in the clear at 3 miles an hour. But anytime he's in the forest he can only travel 2 miles an hour. So where should Bob turn if he should turn at all to finish the hike in the fastest possible time? One thing to mention before we get into the solution of this problem is that in the diagram the forest continues off to the left and to the right forever and so the little uh, piece on the edge there that's marked five miles is actually going through the forest itself. So let's see how we might work this problem. So to start this problem, let's play with it and try a few potential routes out. And Maybe through playing with this problem, we'll have a better idea of what we're being asked to do. So one, one uh, potential route here is uh, simply just going a straight line from the trailhead to the campsite. That would certainly be the shortest distance, but what about the time? I mean, it's the shortest distance, but it's traveling through this dense forest the whole time. and can't move as fast. So uh, how would I find how long time-wise that is? Well, just as a note over here, we know from basic math that distance equals rate times time. And so if I wanted to find the time that something takes, a route takes, I'd have to take its distance and divide by the rate. And I have two different rates in this problem, one for when it's traveling through the forest, that's two miles an hour, and another when it's traveling in the clear or along the edge, that's three miles an hour. So in this case, how long time-wise does this route take? Well, uh, the, the distance here is going to be the square root of 20 squared plus 5 squared, because I have a right triangle that's formed right here, this large triangle down below, and the route there is the hypotenuse of that. So that comes out to be about 20.62 miles in all. That's the distance, and now the time that it takes is 20.62, the distance divided by the rate, which in this case is 2 miles an hour. So that's 10.31 hours total for that particular hike. Now there's another potential route that could be taken here, and that is uh, to go from the trailhead all the way skirting the edge of the forest to here, and then cut straight north, a quick jaunt north, spending as little time as possible in the forest. Now that sounds like a good idea, but how long does that take? Well, there's two different rates involved in this case. So here, uh, the first leg, the leg that goes from east to west, the distance is obviously 20 miles. Uh, you see that here on the diagram, and you're traveling at 3 miles an hour. So the time here is 20 over 3, plus I have to add on the time for this leg here. That's 5 miles divided by 2 miles an hour. So that comes out to be about 9.17 hours just approximating to get a sense of which one, which route is shorter than the other. Now there's a third possible way here too, and this is uh, where the, what the diagram indicates here. I'm going to put this in purple, and that would be to go along the trailhead, and let's say I go 15 miles this way, and then stop on the edge and then cut up this way. Now how long time-wise does that take? Well, let's take a look. Okay, this length down here, we said it was 15 miles, and I'm going to uh, divide that by the rate, which is 3 miles per hour. Plus, now I need to know this distance right here. Let's pull that down here, the distance of that segment there. Uh, it's five, this was 15 miles over here, so this must be 5, the remaining 5 miles. So the distance is radical 5 squared plus 5 squared. It's another right triangle. This leg is always 5 miles. This leg happened to be the remaining distance. If I travel 15 from here to here to the turning point, and the rest must be 5 miles. Okay, so that comes out to be about 7.071 .07 miles, and the time, well, I've actually got that going over here, don't I? 7.071 .07 miles divided by 2. So this is the time for the uh, east-west leg, and this is the time that it takes for the uh, angled leg that goes up to the campsite. And that comes out to be less than either of the other two, 8.536 hours. Okay, so we have the suspicion that if I turn at some point, uh, we don't know where exactly, then I'm going to minimize my time. The sweet spot for the hiking time is by turning somewhere prior to hitting the 20 mile mark over here. Now I think we understand the question, and that is where should that turning point be? Where do I put that turning point? How far should I travel to the east before I make my cut? Now we're going to move to a clean sheet of paper and try to work this out. Okay, so now let's take what we learned in playing with the problem and put it to work for us. What we realized in our problem is that the time that Bob travels in, on this hike 
uh, period depends on where this turning point is. So that's the key variable in this problem. We're going to take this distance here, and that's uh, going to control our time. We're going to take this distance here and call that x. So x is going to represent the distance from the trailhead to the turning point on the edge of the forest. So that's x, and now time should depend upon x, and if I'm being asked to optimize time, this is an important step in every optimization problem, I've identified what it is I'm trying to optimize. I'm trying to minimize the time traveled on this hike. So the first thing I need to do, once I recognize that, is to come up with a formula for the thing I'm trying to optimize. That's important. If you know what you want to optimize, you have to create a formula for it. So I need to create a formula for time in terms of my variable x. Okay, let's see how that works. Well, again, I can think about this in two legs here. There's a leg that goes from the trailhead straight uh, east to the turning point, and that's one leg of the journey. Then at point X, I make my cut sort of northeasterly and go this direction. Now, in the examples that we played with, we had to work each of those times out separately. So let's think about the time on it takes on this one. Uh, well, the time that it takes to travel that leg is the distance, which is X, divided by the rate, which is 3 miles an hour. And that's easy enough. Now let's think about this time here. I have to know this distance. Now uh, this is a right triangle being formed here. We see from the turning point to the campsite to this corner here. One of the legs of that right triangle is five miles. What's the other one? Well the entire distance, the whole, is 20 and part of that is x. So the remaining part of this must be 20 minus x. They have to add up to equal 20. Okay, so I have a right triangle with a leg of 20 minus x and a, uh, uh, another leg of 5. And so the uh, hypotenuse length is going to be the square root of 20 minus x, the quantity squared, plus 5 squared. That's the distance. Now if I want the time, I need to take that distance that I just calculated, 20 minus x quantity squared plus 5 squared. I'll just write 25. We know that's what 5 squared is and I have to divide by uh, the, time, the uh, rate that it takes. So I'm going through the forest, so that takes two miles per hour. And that, in a basic sense, I need to clean this up, but in a basic sense, that's my formula that gives me time as a function of x. Now notice, unlike a lot of optimization problems, I don't have to look for a constraint in the problem to substitute out for one of the variables. This really does just fall into my lap as a function of one variable. That's really good from a calculus standpoint. So let's just clean this up very quickly. Uh, the time is equal to x over 3 plus, and what I'm going to do is just expand all the stuff under the uh, square root sign. That would be x squared minus 40x plus 425, and you can work that out separately. So now there's a little workflow that we need to do from this point forward. If I want to find, and this is time, and I want to find the x value that gives an absolute minimum on this. I want to find an absolute minimum value of t. That's my big goal now. Now to do that, there are several things I need to do. First of all, I need to calculate t prime of x to get my derivative, because then I'm going to take that and get the critical numbers of t. And those will be where my local extreme values might live. I need to test the critical numbers to see if they are indeed local extreme values. And then I need to somehow argue that my local extreme values, if I even get any, or whether or not I want them to be, I need to argue whether or not they are absolute extrema or not. And once I have that done, we'll be done with the problem. So let's again move to a clean sheet of paper and work all this math out.